so in this current lesson we're going to explore the concept of projectile motion now from the word projectile it means we are projecting something we are launching something from one point to another now there are two different types for projectile this is let's say case number one and this is case number two we have a horizontal projectile let's say if I do have an object which is released horizontally with a velocity V let's say in the X direction and it falls all the way downwards reaching the current point or I'm going to launch an object at a certain angle and in this case we do have a velocity vector v in which we have an angle let's call it theta with the ground or the surface and this velocity vector has two components the x component and the y component now both of them both of them they are considered to be projectiles now in the first case we're just simply pushing or releasing something at a horizontal velocity and it follows a certain path and this is what we call as the trajectory now this is a very important term the path of motion that is followed in projectiles is called trajectory it just simply shows you the path that these objects are following whether in case number one or in case number two now what's so special about projectile motion now first of all we have to keep in mind we have two different cases this is case number one and this is case number two where case number one we are releasing an object or launching something horizontally and just simply goes all the way down towards an endpoint it could be off a cliff or off a table irrespectively on the other hand if we are launching something and the best example will be kicking a ball you're going to kick the ball upwards it will fall back downwards reaching the ground now we do have a velocity vector in this case which is acting at a specific angle with respect to the ground or the launching position and this is the angle theta and the components in this case for this vector are going to be broken down into two parts the x component and the y component now it's important to keep in mind that we should know how to resolve and get these components let's say if I need to find my vx I'm going to say vx equals to v cosine theta and vy equals to v sine theta now i'll give you a small trick if the angle is trapped between the vector and the axis this will be the cosine if the angle is opposite to it in other words the angle is far from it so in this case we have nothing trapped between the velocity vector and the uh, y-axis then the y-axis will be a sine theta so let's say if i reverse the cases if i say for example i have a vector v and I do have the following angle theta and I need to find the components in this case I have the Vx and the Vy Vy equals to V cosine theta in this case and the Vx equals to V sine theta in this case why why did I switch since I said Vy is V cosine theta instead of Vx because the angle's position has changed now so the angle is trapped between the y-axis and the actual velocity vector we have theta between them but on the other case in the other case we have the vector v and the theta which is trapping or trapped between the velocity vector v and the x-axis in this case so this is a small trick that will help you distinguish how can you get the components but it's very important first of all to know what are the two type of projectiles that we have case number one case number two and how can we in case number two get the components for the velocity vector in both axes the x and the y now what's so special about the projectile motion now the projectile motion is basically two different motions let's say i'm going to go for case number two in this case 
and I'm going to be releasing something upwards and falls all the way downwards. I have a certain velocity V with an angle theta, and this is V, and I have the components in the X and the Y direction. So in this case, VX equals to V cosine theta, and VY equals to V sine theta. Now, in case number one, in the previous case, let's say, where we have just simply releasing something horizontally this way, in this case, I do have the velocity in the X direction only, However, in the y direction at the beginning, at the beginning of the motion, we have no uh, component, let's say, for the uh, y direction. So the both cases, they are quite different at the beginning. In this case, we do have two components, but the first case is simply we have vx and we have vy equals to zero at this current starting point. But what is so special about the projectile motion? Now, the projectile motion is basically two motions combined together. If we have, we have the motion in the X direction, let's say, and we have the motion in the Y direction. What does that mean? If you take a look at this current example right here, we have this motion, which is covered in the X direction, and we have the vertical motion upwards, which is covered in the Y direction. If I want to break them down separately, let's say I have a small ball right here, and I'm going to be releasing it in the projectile in the following motion, let's say. And I'm going to consider both motions separately, the X and the Y motions. Now, in the X direction, the velocity is constant so we have constant velocity and we have zero acceleration no acceleration whatsoever why because in this current direction the net force is zero and the only acceleration which is taking place after the release is the acceleration due to gravity which is perpendicularly downwards so 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 you'll notice that in the y direction we do have a constant acceleration because we are under the influence of gravity and the acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second square now for the velocity v velocity will change as changing so we have two separate motions in this case we do have the x and we have the y directions if we combine both of them we are going to have this projectile motion and the best way to think about it if you have a free fall you have an object falling freely downwards it's a great representation for the y-axis motion which is if you have a ball and you simply drop it downwards free fall this is a great example for the motion under the constant acceleration in the y direction. And if you have an object moving horizontally with a constant velocity, let's say a car, a sphere, whatever it is, where you have constant velocity. So the combination of these two motions together will give you a projectile motion. If you are moving with a constant velocity in the x direction plus free falling let's say in the y direction combine this motion with this motion you'll end up having a projectile motion one of these two cases this case or this case now what's so special about the projectile motion once again now if you are familiar with the equations of motion if you are familiar with the equations of motion or the kinematics equation in the y direction again we're going to split the uh, motions and in the x direction we said that in the x direction we do have constant velocity so if we have constant velocity it means there's only one equation that works and in this case vx equals to my change in position in the x direction over time this is basically saying speed is distance over time because we have constant velocity. This is the only equation that we are able to use. So we have one equation. However, in the y direction, because we have constant 
acceleration because we have constant acceleration then we're going to apply the equations of motion under constant acceleration or known as the equations of kinematics so in this case we do have three equations that we need to use we have v final in the y direction obviously because we have split the motion to y and to x v final in the y direction equals v final y direction squared equals to v initial in the y direction squared plus two times the acceleration into delta x in the y direction which is the displacement in the vertical direction keep in mind for the y y side of the projectile motion we are under the influence of gravity so we're going to be going in a vertical direction however in the x part of the projectile motion we're going to have constant velocity and we have a single equation which is speed equals to distance over time simply put now the second equation would be v final in the y direction equals to v initial in the y direction plus the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by time and the third equation would be delta x in the y direction equals to half the acceleration multiplied by time square plus v initial in the y direction multiplied by t so these equations they should be familiar if you have studied the lesson of kinematics motion with constant acceleration or even free fall the free fall lesson just simply replaces the acceleration with g which is the acceleration of gravity so the combination of multiple lessons in physics one of them is the constant acceleration and the movement with constant velocity combine them together the motion in the y direction and the motion in the x direction you have a projectile motion so these are important equations that you should be familiar with and you should know them by heart now if we go backwards and we want to take a look at further details about the projectile motion let's examine the following case so once the object is launched in the air for example you're kicking a ball at every single point in time since the velocity is constant so v in the, in the x direction velocity is constant so the vector will look the same at every part of the motion however if you take a look at the uh, vertical component of the velocity as the height increases the component becomes smaller and smaller and it's zero at the maximum height this is called the maximum height maximum height obviously when you kick a ball it goes upwards it slows down it slows down gets to a maximum height where the velocity at the top is zero it's very important to keep this in mind that the velocity at the maximum height v final in the y direction at the maximum height is going to be zero now the motion is going to be reversed once we cross the maximum where the component is going to be the velocity component in the y direction will be flipped upside down and it will increase as we go downwards now you will notice that these points they are just simply replicas or they are exactly the same however the direction has changed so this motion is known as a symmetrical motion it means whatever is happening on the left side is happening on the right side but the direction is reversed so let's recap what we have talked about so we said projectile motion is a motion that follows a certain trajectory and we have two different cases where we have case number one we release something with a horizontal velocity and it just simply follows a trajectory all the way down or we launch something at an angle and then it follows a path all the way to a maximum point that falls all the way down then we have mentioned that the projectile motion is mainly two different motions combined together the motion in the x direction we have constant velocity and the motion in the y direction we have constant acceleration so in the, the motion in the x direction it means zero acceleration we have only one formula that we can use however since we are moving with a constant acceleration in the y direction the first thing that should come to mind that we are able to use the equations for motion under constant acceleration which are three equations